Good morning, everyone. I'm Joan Villa. I'm the moderator of this session. I speak from Catalonia. We have a temperature that's very good between 8 and 14 degrees centigrade and just a few clouds. Today, we're going to be trying in this session to see whether we are able to find synergies between countries, especially between the four regions that, as we know, are the engines of Europe. The four regions should lead energy transition because as we can see nowadays with the problems in the economy, this energy transition is going to be essential for the future and for the modernization of our societies. This session today will be having a continuity on November the 18th with a brokerage event that uh, within the Smart Cities Conference will try and find synergies between companies in order to develop common projects. For logistic purposes, I'm going to be asking you all, please, to be as short and succinct as you can. You have to be very good about time. We're going to try and be very, very good about time. And also, because of technology, let me tell you, you have the interpreting function and you can select the language you want to listen to. So I will also ask you please to speak as, as, as clearly as possible and as slow as possible, because that makes the job easier for the interpreters. And this is something I tend not to do myself, but I'm going to try and I would recommend all of you to do it, please. So let us begin. Let us begin today's event, giving the floor to the very honorable Teresa Jorda, who is the Council of the Minister of Climate Action of the Catalan government. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joan. And indeed, I can confirm that the climate in Catalonia is at the temperature that Joan was telling us about, a nice temperature, less and less clouds, which very possibly will make us all wake up to a sunny Wednesday. Welcome, welcome everybody. A very good day to you all. And first of all, I would like to thank the initiative of the Catalan Institute for Energy and also the support of the Foreign Action Department and the Open Forum for the organization of this webinar, which as Joan, the delegate councillor of the Energy Commission of PIMEC was saying is absolutely transcendental and very important. And also thank you to the three regions participating in the webinar and thank you for your involvement in all the activities of the program of the Catalan Presidency of the Four Engines for Europe, the Four Motors for Europe, which if I'm not wrong, will end at the end of the month of December. These Four Motors for Europe have a long standing tradition and indeed a very successful history of close collaboration of more than 30 years leading European development in a number of different areas as well as global development. And I would like to take advantage of my speaking to you that our will at Catalonia is to continue to work together and looking indeed for all these synergies. So we will, we will keep on working with you all and we believe in still being the motors for Europe in climate uh, areas, environmental areas, and of course, energy, which we're going to be dealing with today. It's an honor to be officially opening this seminar and especially because of the subject of this webinar, which is energy transition. I would like to start being very clear, and if you allow me, I'm going to be very direct as well. Energy transition is an imperious need. It is a crucial need, and it has the maximum involvement of the whole of the government of Catalonia. So it is a necessity, and at the same time, it is something convenient, interesting for us all. Energy transition, as I was saying, is an opportunity. And if you allow me, I have to say it's an opportunity for economic growth and for social change, undoubtedly moving from a centralized energy model to a different model that requires participation, a model in which citizenship, companies and local administrations will also be producing energy. 
one of the very first steps to begin along this path of energy transition has been the creation in Catalonia of the Department for Climate Action, which it is my honor to lead, incorporating as well in this new department, the competencies that we are dealing with today, that is energy. In fact, it is an organizational change. And the way we see it is a, it is a very important change because right from the beginning of self-government in Catalonia, energy policies have always been integrated within the different ministries of industry and also of economy. And this, we believe, has relegated to a point any energy model idea of an economy that keeps burning fuel fossils and still has a centralized structure. And as a consequence, in fact, we follow too much the oil-based and fossil fuel model that was, instead of following what we had been told already, instead of listening to what was happening about climate change, now is the time to act. We, we late, really, we, we have to now act. We have to go to a distributed model, to a transformative model of the economy and of society, and wherever energy is generated, we have to make sure that we implement new economic activity. At Catalonia, indeed, we don't want to repeat a model that's based on centers that macro produce energy transported by high voltage lines that all they do is uh, depopulate the territory and transfer companies to the large cities. And we have it very clear that this has to be done right next to those that have the key for transformation. Although up till now, these have been, let me say, relegated. And that's a pity because that is now a change that we have to follow. We want to go to towards a sustainable energy model that respects the territory. And we want to do it simultaneously in an agreed uh, manner based on consensus and commitment. We always say that the, the what is as important as the how. And this change that we want towards sustainable energy models has to go along with a democratization of the energy model that has to be 100% renewable energies, 100% a democratic model, and also a model based on proximity. We have to stop being the country of, no, no, not here. Yes, of the people always complaining, no, no, we don't want this here. And we have to become a place of maybe not like this, but yes, here and done this way. It is extremely necessary we change our mindset. So we have the determination of getting social consensus and at the same time, the guarantee of a fair treatment for rural areas and for those smaller municipalities in our country, which as you know, are many in Catalonia. And because of this, we work to define the Catalan energy model on the basis, a firm basis that says that energy transition has to be much more than changing energy resources. And it is this, indeed, we have to change from fossil fuels to renewable energies, but really it has to be something else. The energy model of our country, the Catalan energy model will make local energy commitments participated by citizenship and they will be at the very center of production of electricity, of electric energy. It will be democratic. It will be participation and it will have a strong component of social empowerment. And especially I repeat, and I don't want to be saying it too much, but it has to be said, there has to be a consensus of territory to make sure that the change happens faster. If we all go in the same direction, it will happen earlier because this transition is happening. It's here and our government is going to be making it a reality and we will really work as hard as we can. In the coming months, we're going to be accelerating the process of energy transition transition and once and for all we will make it possible to have a new energy model for our country because the risk of this transition not being carried out by us will be that somebody else will do it and it will be done by people following a model we don't like this extractive model that is so terrible a monopolistic model that has predominated up till now basically that's all from me we don't have too much time. Joan Villa was telling us we can't speak for too long, but just let me say once again, I'm profoundly grateful. Yes, we are here next to you. Let us all move together in this energy transition. Let's do it together. Let's find these synergies that I know we'll find them. That's all. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you very much indeed. Teresa Jordá, our minister. Now we shall give the floor to Monsieur Frédéric Polichon. So you have the floor, please. Hello, good morning, everyone. 
Hello. Thank you, Mr. Villa, for moderating the discussion. It is great. I have to say it's it, the weather is very nice in Lyon as well. So meteorologically, yes, uh, Europe seems to be in agreement. So indeed, we are all happy and we can all have this uh, weather news coming from the different region. This uh, meeting uh, through video conference is also a model that contributes to less uh, use of resources because we don't have to travel. And I'm sure that our carbon footprint would have been much worse if we had had to travel. My thanks to, Catal to Catalonia and to the Minister Teresa Jordà. Thank you very much for your kind, kind words. And my thanks and my salutations, my greetings to, all, to some of the people I don't know yet. But yes, we are all here. And I am speaking to you after the elections of June 2021. One could say many, many things about different subject areas. I'm going to be concentrating my words on two areas, hydrogen and solar energy. But indeed, the ambition of our region is to be the region of decarbonized energies. This is essential. I don't know whether this is going to be a first in Europe, but it is indeed the definition of what we want to do. We are the first region in France that uh, wants to go towards producing renewable energies. We have um, between 2015 and 2030, we want to multiply times two this kind of renewable energy, and we want to also reduce the consumption of um, certain forms of energy based on carbon. And in France, the whole of the country, we have an important program to reduce the consumption of energy uh, through, of course, uh, public services. And we're going to be working to identify the bad or the inefficiencies of energy, first of all. Then we believe in a decarbonized industry. We want to improve the quality of the air because we all know that pollution is a problem. And in the Mont Blanc region, for example, Mm, we have had uh, quite a progression thanks to voluntary action of many. And there are so many partnerships, even the citizens and the in, in industry, they've worked together to improve the situation. And we want to follow, we want to copy that program. And it's been a pilot project that we want to repeat elsewhere. And it's giving very good results, really. And also good results as to public health because uh, especially as in children, we have less, less health problems because there is less pollution. So also photovoltaic energy and hydrogen is what we want to work on. And we want to make it as global as possible. So it's not really just pushing energy forward, but to make sure that we push those most virtuous forms of energy forward. That is what is so important. Yes, in France, we keep having controversies. Uh, and sometimes there are some people, that, and especially because the presidential election is looming in the horizon and there are people you get people criticizing and you get false history. So we must have a very clear hydrogen strategy. Catherine is going to be explaining it and she's the person in charge of the program, but we want to guarantee self-sufficiency of the region with decarbonized hydrogen. And we're going to be using green hydrogen with uh, three centralized plants, one in Lyon in the center of the region, one in Clermont at the, in the west and another in Grenoble. And this is done so that we can make sure that we have it all over in all the different ecosystems and distribution plants or stations. We want to structure that very well indeed. And we want to, of course, do it with the consensus of the territory. This is important then. You, one has to count with all the municipalities and uh, there has to be a working together so that these three stations for hydrogen distribution work well and solve, solve the issue of energy. But that means, of course, many decisions. Our evolution is part of a program, Zero Emissions, and this is what we're working on too. Then something else about energy, we are also working in order to reduce production. And we want to find solutions that have come very late, in fact, and that uh, it just cannot be. Most especially when we see 
the the number of sunny days that are increasing, I don't know if it's something good or bad, because obviously there's also climate change involved, but the fact is that we have more sunny days and not so many cloudy days. But then that means, of course, that the potential of solar energy is very big and we have to make sure that we use it. And so with the photovoltaic and solar energy as such, we're going to be having the possibility of a lot of energy. But another important challenge that we have and that we will deal with in the French presidency of the four motors is that we want to re-industrialize our country. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure that we go back to production so that we don't depend so much on other economies and we want to become more independent. We want to have a re-Europeanization, so to speak, of the whole of the production chain. We want to make sure that many equipments and facilities and installations are actually made and produced on our territory in France and Europe. And so we don't want to have to depend on other countries, mainly as we know China, to produce uh, what we use. So that has to be done properly. This re-industrialization has to be worked on well. We have to do it with another energy model and we have to do it as well, taking into account citizens and taking into account local governments to make sure that there's a whole synergy. So basically this is what I wanted to say about, uh, well, what we are working on. I could say so many things. There's a lot to say about training and education, yes, because this uh, technical evolution and revolution will only success succeed, sorry, if we have really good training and education and awareness programs, because we have to make everybody responsible. And the only way is explaining so that people know what it is that we're doing. So anyway, I hope we meet again because it will be great working together. So I know that I'm going to be seeing you and it's good that we complement each other with, uh, uh, well, having France, Italy, Spain, Germany, and we have the best of the best through our regions. So we really feel happy about it. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Frédéric. I'm really, it's incredible. You, you do have this ambition of being number one. Well, my congratulations. This is the way to follow. I mean, these are great challenges. So my congratulations, really. Now we go on to Mexic Mauer from the region of Baden-Württemberg. So. You have the floor. Mr. Hansen, turn on the microphone, please. Your microphone, please. Um, thank, you, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. From here, from my window, I can say that it's quite a sunny day as well. And this is another point of connection, isn't it? So the sun is shined, shining for all of us. And it's a good, uh, very good indication for this synergy and for this meeting of the four of us, of the four motors of Europe. We're looking to strengthen the economy through the collaboration of the four regions. And this is extremely positive. So let me tell you, 33 years have gone by and at the beginning of this organization of these four motors for Europe, anything that had to do with climate change was not dealt with practically at all. At the beginning, things have changed uh, along our collaboration. I do remember, however, that the economy was always one of the, the main goals. It was what we wanted to work for together. There are a number of different scientific models showing that climate change is unavoidable. It's happening. We have it with us. And the protection of climate has to be a global thing that we have to work on, but we have to work in a coordinated manner. The European Union has a huge mission in front because we have to make sure that the European Union creates a regulatory framework, a legal framework, and we are working towards 2050 to make sure that we have our goals attained for that year and even before if possible. And here in our case, as four motors for Europe, we have an essential task to develop as regards 
the development of innovation, technology, and uh, making sure that we achieve this. Germany is looking for a situation to reduce emissions up to 2050. And in our region, Baden-Württemberg, we want to make sure that we reach that in 2040. We want to be a zero emissions region. In a parallel manner in Germany, we see a change happening. There is uh, nuclear energy is being reduced to a standstill and we want to do away with coal-based energy. This will be possible if we can develop renewable energies better. And if we can do this very quickly, it is extremely important that this happens quickly. Nuclear atomic energy for me is not the solution because it is extremely risky and it represents really an energy model that is not compatible from our standpoint because it generates a lot of waste. We know that atomic uh, nuclear energy is uh, quite harmful because of the, the risks associated to it and it doesn't fit in in our energy strategy any longer. So that's why we are working to do away with it. We all agree that Europe has to try and reinforce its domestic energy market, the European energy market. We have been working on emission rights and we are also working on the development of a hydrogen infrastructure. I know, yes, that we have geographical borders between our regions, but our regions in a joint manner have been and are working, in fact, in this direction. This European exchange is absolutely important to achieve this energy transition. And because of this, uh, we have platforms such as the Sustainable Energy Week that are especially significant and models to follow, undoubtedly. In this way, we can make headway with our joint project. Energy transition is a very complex challenge for society because of policies and the economy in Europe. But not only this, it opens a new way to look at energy and it opens the possibility of developing cooperation among different societies and states. And we have to absolutely take advantage of this opportunity to work in a trans-border way, all of us together. This is the European contemporary response of our times. I hope indeed that the Sustainable Energy Week is very successful. And I also hope that everything is good for all the participants. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you and my congratulations for being so ambitious in progressing and deciding it's 2040 and not 2050 that you want. This is what we need to be really brave and to lead the way. And also what Mr. Frédéric Bonichon said, we have to make sure that we make this, this issue European and the solutions European as well. This is the way to go. We give the floor now to Signore Raffaele from Catania, Lombardy region. You have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning from Milano. It's also very sunny. It's 10 degrees, which is a bit cold, but these in any case are the conditions, the weather conditions that we have. And I have to say that pollution accumulates because of the greenhouse effect. So it's not a spectacular effect because we have this, uh, well, this sun that at the same time makes it more difficult for the pollution fumes to leave. Anyway, I'm very happy to see all the people here, Teresa Jorda, Frederic Bonichon, um, Helfried Meinel, all of you, it's lovely to see you. It's great to be in this collaboration of the four motors for Europe. It's a very useful collaboration. It's such, such, such a, a good thing that we talk about this energy transition. I'm going to be talking about four things. First of all, first of all, the change of mentality. It is so important. We have to make sure that there's an awareness and that people change their mindset. Climate change is happening already. And this is the message, but the message has to be that climate change is local. Yes, local, 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 
global, but local as well. We need agreements such as the Paris Agreement. We need ambitions such as the ones uh, I and all of you share because the states and the regions and the municipalities must move forward. We have next week uh, a special meeting, but we need local action. United Nations remind us about the fact that in 70, 80% of energy transition policies, in fact, the configuration and the deployment happens within regions and cities. So regions as well have a, a crucial role to play. And we as regions can promote and foster this development. Second, we must be the change because climate change is happening now. So climate policies have to happen now. The moment of transition is now. As of today, up to 2030 is the first steps, but then we go to 2050. And if we think about it, it's not really all that much time and radical changes will have to take place. Radical changes that can be compared with the industrial revolution maybe. And we can attain this, we can. It is a huge challenge, but these ambitious goals have to be what they are. And we have to make sure that we have adapted policies that will make us attain the goals. It's not gonna be easy. The first policy I think is to select the correct methodology to follow. And this methodology means inclusion policies very important bottom up policies, because we must all build together and we must do it with associations, entrepreneurs, companies, environmental organizations. We cannot make the mistake of thinking that it is sufficient to have top down policies as was the case up till now. We can't think that that is to define our regions, not at all. In Lombardia, what we did first of all was to create an observatory with all the agents for climate change. We have developed a protocol for sustainable development and we are all working together towards defining the strategy for sustainable development. And we are all involved in developing plans and programs for energy transition. And I'll tell you about it right now. So the third leg of our action, bottom-up policies are not enough because we have to define the content. And I'm going to be indicating two that we work on in Lombardia, energy transition by means of the regional plan of environment, climate and circular economy with the updating of our plan for the management of waste. And the name of it is the plan towards circular economy. We believe that these are the elements that have to be worked on and it's what we are programming. And this is what we want to have for the end of the year, a clear plan. So if you want energy transition, it means that from now to 2030, you must have a reduction of 30% of energy consumption. In Lombardia, we have 10 million inhabitants and we have a huge number of, of companies. And for 20 years now, we've had very high levels of energy consumption. It's 25 million tons waste that are generated. And in 10 years, we will have to reduce practically 50%, only possible with a program of energy efficiency. And this is to be done in both in public and private housing and in companies. That's what I said. Everybody will have to reduce energy consumption by 30% because that way we can get to zero emissions and zero cost. And we have to also make sure that we multiply times two energy coming from renewable sources. What are these sources for our region? We don't have wind in Lombardia and we can't really work with the windmills or with the sea. But for quite a long time, we've been using electricity intensely, but with climate change, of course, uh, well, the presence of water in the mountains will be less, so we can't generate uh, electricity like that. But we have biomass, we have many plants where we use animal waste in order to, to generate energy. But we also believe in solar energy. We have to make sure that we multiply our solar energy and photovoltaic. And that means 4,500 hectares of photovoltaic facilities up to 2030. So 
1500 municipalities are going to be working towards this and we're going to be having huge extensions of plants treating this and we know it's complex but we have to work on it and we have to implement this new energy transition model that requires local commitment and we have to go also towards circular energy now we're working on recovering 61 percent of urban waste we work on selective uh, management of waste and as i say 61 percent of waste is being reutilized and that's many many tons of urban waste that are reutilized and we want to do that as well with special waste because we have to go towards the reduction as well in the production of waste and let me conclude by saying that our regions were leaders in the economic development model when it was linear economy. And now we have to decide whether we want to lead or whether we want to be followers. If we want to be leaders, we can't do the same things we did in the past. We have to transform. We have to become the driving motors for sustainable development. And this is what we're going to be having in the future. Sustainable development and not degrowth, not less growth. I mean, we have we have lived that, but we want in any case a happy reduction of growth. I know people who've lost their jobs and companies that have passed through critical times. So we must go towards a development that follows a different model that is based on environmental transition and circular economy. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Mr. Rafael Catania, thank you. Really, what you said is so, so interesting. This this change of mindset that we need and the fact that, yes, indeed, we are starting a new industrial revolution or rather not so much industrial because that's not a nice word, but it's an efficiency revolution. And thank you very much. And thank you for what you for telling us what you're doing in your region. It's it's great. Congratulations. We go on now to the debate session. Uh, round panel discussion. Now I'm going to be very strict about time, yes? So we shall start by Catalonia with Marta Moreira and Irene Pérez. I will not be giving you to the floor. You have 10 minutes for the two. Okay, thank you very much, Joan. And thank you as well to the other members of the Four Motors for Europe Thank you to the participants and all the people here and my colleagues of the Catalan government who have collaborated in the organization of this webinar. As has been said this week, we have the European Sustainable Energy Week in the framework of which here at Catalonia, we are promoting actions to inform and to remind citizens, professionals and companies that we do need this new energy model that we're talking about. And from the Generalitat of Catalonia, the Catalan government, we are working towards an energy transition that goes to a model based on energy efficiency. This has been mentioned already by the Catalan minister. And we go towards renewable distributed energy where consumers are active agents of this new model. Energy transition, and this has been mentioned already by our minister, is on the one hand necessary to mitigate climate change because in 70, 75% of the emissions of uh, greenhouse gases come from energy, but also because of geostrategical reasons, we have to make sure that we become self-sufficient in energy. And because of what's happening with the prices of energy, we see that this is more important than ever. Than ever. And also, of course, because, uh, well, uh, we want to follow the European framework. And here in Catalonia, we have the law of uh, 2017 that has to do with climate change and we follow the European regulations. But as the minister said, energy transition is uh, good as well as an opportunity to dynamize the economy and because of the competitivity, the competitiveness of companies, it is crucial. It is also an opportunity because it creates new economic sectors that have to do both with innovation, digitization and local generation of energy. And it is also a positive element to increase the involvement and participation of society and also good for the fight against energy poverty. The main 
action lines and figures of energy transition in Catalonia are as follows. In order to get to this decarbonized energy model, first of all, we have to base this on a huge effort of energy efficiency. This has been mentioned already, because in the horizon of 2050 in Catalonia, we will have to be capable, able to reduce two thirds the reduction of this energy because if we don't do that, we won't have the ability to generate sufficient energy that is from renewable sources. And second, we have to have massive uh, deployment of renewable energy. In Catalonia, we have the Pro and Cat 2050. It's the roadmap for energy transition in Catalonia. It's being developed by the institution that I am the director of, the Energy Institute of Catalonia. And as I was saying, our legal framework in Catalonia gives us uh, the indications of knowledge of what should be the leading energies and what the figures for energy are throughout Catalonia. And we know that Catalonia in 2030 will need at least 4,000 wind megawatts. Right now we only have 1,200 and 6,000 photovoltaic megawatts. And right now we only have 400. So if we go now to the 2050 horizon, we will have to have minimum 12,000 wind megawatts and 36,000 photovoltaic megawatts. And of these 40% covered and 60% on the territory. So the use of uh, rooftops of buildings indeed will contribute between 30 to 40% of the necessary renewable energy. And it will be necessary to use the territory then for the generation of renewable source energy. This is uh, key in our region. The calculations are that between 1.5 to 2.5% of the non-housing uh, development surface will be devoted to that. So we'll have to deal with local administrations and with the citizens as to where to best place those plants for renewable energy production and more data about our legal framework in Catalonia. We anticipate energy transition based on electrification, reaching to 37% of end consumption by 2030, that will be electricity, and 85% for the year 2050. But the plan also considers biomass, uh, biomethane, and hydrogen as locally important resources for consumptions that cannot be electrified. And regarding the legal corpus that we have been working on in Catalonia, both what we have and what we're working on for the future to allow for all this to happen, well, we have a national agreement for energy transition passed in 2017, the Climate Change Act of 2017, and the Climate Emergency Declaration of 2019. Right now, we are working on the draft of the Energy Transition Act for Catalonia and the sectorial transformation model for the development and deployment of renewable energies in Catalonia that will work on the basis of consensus between administrations and citizens of where to best have all these stations and plants. Then we have a new legal package that will accelerate the implementation of a distributed renewable energies together with the sectorial plan. And with this, we will uh, modify a legal package and we will go towards a model of agreement with citizens and local administrations to decide where the places will be for the production of renewable energy source. Finally, as to subsidies and financial aid, we are deploying a number of credits and subventions that go to help for energy, renewable energy, and also energy transition everywhere. And all in all, 340 million euro managed by the Catalan Energy Agency coming from the European funds and the territorialized funds. Marta, Irene needs to talk. Yes, she only has four minutes. Well, finally, energy transition has to uh, make sure that consumers are active agents of the energy model. So this will not happen without the citizenship and companies as well. We really have to work together and we have to make an effort of communication, both public and private, and actions such as the Week for Energy, the Citizen Forum, or Schools for Energy, 
and a number of different programs. All this has to help disseminate this model and incorporate consumers to energy transition. That's it. I give the floor now to our colleague Irene Perez of the City Council of Ruby, the town, and now the technical person responsible for Ruby Shines, a local initiative that started this way towards energy transition in 2011. So it's a reference for all of us indeed, and it really has a lot to do with success. And she's going to be telling you all, I hope it, it is an inspiration. It was for me because I participated in the project. Irina, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Marta, and thank you to the organizers for having invited us to explain this Ruby Brilla, Ruby Shines in this forum. Well, could Istok share my presentation? Yes, lovely, thank you very much. Well, let me start. First of all, let me tell you about the town of Ruby. Next slide. Here you see the town of Ruby, 75,000 inhabitants and 11 industrial parks. In fact, we are the second most industrialized town in the whole of Catalonia. And this means that our carbon footprint is pretty, pretty heavy. The commitment uh, acquired by the Ruby municipal government in order to change the energy model towards a more sustainable and fair model started, as Marta said, in 2011 with the creation of the Ruby Shines project. And now, in fact, it's become a department of the local government and we want to reduce our carbon footprint. Oops, her connection, I'm sorry, her connection is failing. The interpreter is very sorry, we're not getting her connection. Irene? I'm sorry, the connection is not working, I'm sorry. We can't hear you, Irene. No, your intervention is not working. Yes, uh, you're frozen, totally. Irene, why don't you do something? Just get your video off and leave your microphone open, and that way uh, Zoom will will be will have resources to work. Good. Shall we go on to the next panel discussion? Yes, that's up to you indeed. Yeah, I think it might be best. So please, uh, can you take the presentation out? We go on to the next. Well, let's leave this presentation of Irene about the town of Ruby. And you have the information in the internet and you can follow the project there. Next, we go to Miss uh, Caterina Adropardi and Mr. Etienne Biro, who'll talk about hydrogen in the Alps. Hello, hi, good morning everyone. I'm very happy indeed in that I'm here with you all and we are going to be talking about the hydrogen situation and the strategy of our region. Our region in Rhone Alps is an industrial region and has been for a long time. So our carbon footprint was pretty hefty. Could I have my presentation please on the screen? In our region, we have 80% of the hydrogen sector in France and we have them in our territory in the whole value change both uh, as to cells and distribution centers. We have um, 26 research centers in the region, no less. We also have, uh, well, important competitiveness going on because uh, all this uh, sustains good dynamics as to the different projects that are being developed. Yes, I would like to share the slides with you. I don't know if you have them. Okay, yes, here we have the slides. And here we see the map showing the number of projects identified in our region. Last year, we worked precisely on this, on identifying places where things were happening uh, with hydrogen. 
we have identified 30 different projects in our region, projects that have to do with hydrogen. And this uh, represents 23,000 CO2 tons prevented per year and 400 direct and indirect jobs. So indeed, uh, well, as I said, the development is strong in our region. Uh, and the strategy that we've worked on is, first of all, to develop the markets. That's important. So here in the slide, you can see it. Yes, I'm afraid that you're not sharing the slides properly. You should have the presentation mode so that we can all see the slides properly. Thank you. No. I can do it without the slides as well. No, I meant to change the view. Oui, dupliquer les diapos. Abajo, un poquito abajo. Dupliquer les diapos. Oui, non. On ne fait pas de partage. On va, on va faire sans les, sans les images. Ça ira très bien. Aussi. Well, never mind. Never mind. We'll do it without the slides. Don't, don't worry. So anyway, in the strategy of the regions, there are a number of different challenges. The first is to have the to make sure that we develop the market of hydrogen and mobility is the most mature element right now. And so the region has defined a structuring project for our region, which means to create 20 hydrogen distribution stations of renewable energy and throughout the region. Three of them are shared for uh, entrepreneurial and mobility uses. And then we have also 200 vehicles that will be uh, actually charging in these hydrogen distribution plants. And this will allow for us to cover the, the whole region with hydrogen stations. And we will be leaders in France as to hydrogen as an energy option. These 20 plants or stations are territorial projects. We're going to be involving local governments and companies especially to make sure that we have fleets that are for mobility and close to these hydrogen stations. Then we want to work and develop energy markets. This is very important and it's something that the public powers have to do, we believe. It means to go towards renewable energies and have proper structured markets that have to do with them. We also have a hydrogen storing project in saline cellars that are installations that uh, we have in the territory. And next year, we're going to be working as well for hydrogen storage. And this will allow us to have a special network of hydrogen stored. And this means that we can actually back up industrial production and we can foster decarbonization of the energy because we will get the industries to start using hydrogen instead of fossil fuels, as is the case right now. Then, of course, one requires competitive prices and one needs uh, the mass production of this kind of, of energy because we have to make sure that this is energy that, the, that can be used for industrial production. So then one has to take into account uh, the way that hydrogen is produced to make sure it happens at a competitive price. It cannot be too expensive. So this is, I would say, the first axis of our strategy. And the second axis of our strategy has to do, and it's something that's been mentioned before, well, that we have to go to new sectors and new jobs, new employment, and then the, the new companies in this market have to make, have to train their workers towards these new jobs and this new way of working. So hydrogen is not only the production of hydrogen at competitive prices, but it's everything that goes around it. And that means training 
and making sure we have plenty of jobs that have to do with hydrogen. Third axis, we want to intensify European collaboration. We want to have a good exchange. We want to have this working together. And we have created with other regions. So first of all, in France, a special platform that is a European platform. And right now we have 40 regions and cities in Europe that exchange good practices. We also have started working on a European Alliance for Hydrogen. That is the platform with, of anything that has to do with hydrogen. And we are members of a special strategy program, also European. For, and now we're going to be changing because Etienne that is sitting next to me is the head of the project uh, for the Energy and Environmental Agency in our region. And he's going to take over now and detail what it is that we are doing about this strategy. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, indeed, we are working very much. I'm going to be telling you about our strategy and perspectives for collaboration in the Alps. <clears throat> Sorry. So there's a huge potential for development of hydrogen in the region, as has been said, uh, well, we are already working on hydrogen production and have been doing so for quite a time. But we want to make sure that there is uh, enough hydrogen to change the industrial model regarding energy. And we want to make sure as well that there is an awareness as to what hydrogen can do. So we have this full strategy of the development of hydrogen and we are working with many others. So we have to make sure that hydrogen is counted on also for mobility. We have called for a number of competitions so that the different companies and entrepreneurs put forward collaborations that have to do with hydrogen. And this develops means the development of solutions and it has to happen quickly. This is a strategy. And we want it to go over to other regions too. And slowly it will grow. And in this way, we want hydrogen to grow as an energy option. We have these, the idea of synergies that have to be developed. And I will say that last summer we defined the charter for cooperation. This was signed by a number of different mountainous regions in France. And it's not only France, we have neighboring counties. We want to develop solutions in hydrogen, but now we want to apply that to mobility. For example, urban and interurban buses, trucks, the machines we use for cleaning snow, machines and devices used in skiing resorts, and also uh, as to hydrogen production facilities. This is important for us. It shows a political commitment of our region. We want to make sure that this happens and happens now. So all the regions that have signed this charter are starting to think as to how to coordinate and use the European funds to move forward in this hydrogen intensive model. And eventually we will connect all these regions. And it's what uh, Catherine was mentioning. We have to make sure that at least all the Alpine regions work together on this so that this model can be later on exported to more regions. And we're working on this for the coming months and years. We also are trying to develop in a parallel manner to this mobility model, the possibility of hydrogen used industrially in order to clean the air, because we also have the problem of dirty air. And we think then that the use of hydrogen will work for the reduction of pollution levels. We want to make sure that we produce, consume, and store hydrogen in a different way. We want to make sure we go towards decarbonized energy use in our region. And so it is essential as Alpine regions that we keep 
the good quality of the air that we've had up till now. And this can only be done if we change our energy model. All this will be developed through an interreg program. And in the coming weeks, indeed, there will be a new publication appearing and there you will have all the information. So I'm sure that all these other regions and hydrogen actors and agents will collaborate with us too. Thank you very much indeed. And this is all from our region. Thank you. Yes, indeed. It's so important for us to go over and the borders, regional borders, we must work together. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Your hydrogen project is very interesting. Later on, there might be time for questions in the discussion. Now, the floor goes to the baden württemberg representative who will talk about a trans-border project for the reutilization of heat. So, Mr. Ulrich Marit, you have the floor. Thank you very much indeed, thank you. I would like to introduce very briefly the way in which we want to carry out energy transition in Baden-Württemberg, and then I'll refer to a specific project. What are our challenges? Well, we have high energy demand. We are a highly industrialized region. And in 2022, uh, that will be the year of the stop or demolition of the last nuclear energy plant. We also want to achieve um, the reduction of coal-based electricity stations, that for 2030. And we also want, in our Baden-Württemberg region, we want to achieve a situation of reducing emissions up to 2040. And we want to make sure that we foster and enlarge the use and production of renewable energies. And we are the first federal state in Germany that uh, has uh, made it an obligation to have photovoltaic um, energy production in new buildings. It is now mandatory and we want to make sure that this continues so that we grow with photovoltaic energy. And then we want uh, this, we want to use wind as well in the territory, as well as photovoltaic. And we have to make sure that all the circumstances go together towards this being possible. We have worked on making our electric networks larger and we have adapted the infrastructure. This has been mentioned by the Ron Alp region. You have to make sure that everything is ready to go to, to, towards this new model. As to people's homes, we have to reduce the net consumption of energy because we have to prioritize efficiency, that first of all. And we have to guarantee that there is a good supply of heat. And this we want to do with the use of special heat pumps that work and that come from green energy for heating. This is very important in our region. Then up to 2040, we want to get to zero emissions. And for that, we have this program of refurbishing buildings and also refurbishing industrial facilities. In our industrial plan, the tendency is also to go to zero emissions because that's what our clients are demanding, really, that we produce what we make is made with the zero emissions models. And fossil fuel energy producers are slowly disappearing and they will disappear completely from the value chain. And now we're going to be going towards the use of hydrogen and high electrification. This will only work if we dramatically reduce the consumption of energy, full stop. And this means to reuse the surplus of heat or waste heat. So in this uh, direction, I want to tell you about a trans-border waste heat project between the regions of Strasbourg and the Kell. Here you have it. This is uh, factories of metal works that are very near the border with France. So, and it, this follows the Rhine River and all these uh, steel Stahlwerk uh, factories produce 2 million tons per year of steel 
and they sell steel for um, building and mostly this is made of melted car wrecks. This generates huge amounts of waste heat and this is just lost because it is scattered in the air and this waste heat uh, is what we want to reuse in order to make sure that it becomes energy. We want to make sure that 400 homes can use this surplus waste heat and in this way save 15 uh, 15,000 tons of CO2 per year. These steel factories have huge potential as regards the reutilization of heat, of waste heat, and we want to adapt to their production. For that, we have to be fully aware that this production doesn't work in an uninterrupted way, but rather there are pauses in production, and this has to be taken into account when you reutilize the waste heat produced, of course. We couldn't use simply a bridge to cross the river to conduit this heat. And we had to work on a micro tunnel from Germany to France in order to be able to inject this heat to the uh, house heating systems in Strasbourg. Here you see the map, there's Germany on one side and France on the other with, the, on, with Strasbourg on the left and on, you see the steel factories on the right, and then you see at the end of the arrow what homes would be using this waste heat of the steel factories. We have already done a lot to achieve our goal. We started in 2017 with a political procedure that had to make everything possible. There had to be a political initiative, first of all, counting both with the city of Kell and with Strasbourg, of course. Then we defined a project that meant a legal framework. We had to facilitate the project. We created a special company in cooperation. It was a French German company to be able to supply this waste heat for heating purposes. And in January, the project uh, will start as such. Our experience um, up till now is that this kind of experience is really very complex very difficult and somewhat expensive. It requires, I mean, transborder cooperation is really very beneficial. We have really learned this. It's very beneficial for all the agents and persons involved. And it's a very good way of recovering this waste heat that would be lost if not. And in this way, we are reducing our carbon footprint. We also want to support the steel factory. And we want to show that, yes, it's worthwhile to use this surplus waste heat and use it as a renewable energy origin. So up to here, thank you very much indeed. And thank you to the interpreters. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. More. I'm impressed, really impressed by this uh, mandatory thing of having photovoltaic energy in new buildings. This started in California. And I mean, you are pioneers in Europe with this legal requisite. And I hope indeed that this is made extensive to the rest of Europe. Thank you very much indeed. We give the floor now to Jello Karurier, who's going to be talking of the photovoltaic systems and domestic services. So you have the floor. Kurieri. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. How interesting to have this exchange of experiences. Extremely interesting. I'm going to be sharing uh, five minutes with you. Five minutes as was part of the program. And I'm going to be telling you about our project activities that we are working on right now in Lombardia. So let me share my screen with you all. So I'm going to be starting with the first part. And I hope that now you are all seeing my slides. As you're not saying anything, I guess you can see it fine. So in this first part, I have to say, well, the what has been done in our region, Lombardia, we have this new energy program. It's a regional energy, environment and climate program. 
so because of this, we made a new institution. And this shows indeed how much the mindset has changed of the world, especially in these last months and years, things have really changed. The mindset of people has changed. And I mean, the creation of this, my institution is necessary, but this is also because things have changed. Our program has a long-term vision. We're talking about 2050 as a horizon. We have um, full integration. It is based on co-responsibility. And this is also based on a bottom-up approach, as was stated by our minister earlier. We have to make sure that we involve the social fabric as well. Energy has to come from the bottom, not only from the top, and people have to use energy as well in a different way. Let us see what the goals are within this regional energy, environment, and climate program. It's, as I said, already uh, being deployed. And these are our macro objectives. So here you see it. These are binding goals, OK? So all our scheduling and programming evolves on the basis of these macro objectives that have to be present in everything that we do. There are some goals that the minister mentioned already, the reduction of CO2 emissions, and um, also, obviously reduce by 2030. We mustn't wait for 2050. We want to make sure that we have renewable energy sources. We want the growth of the production system in the service of decarbonization. And we want adaptive and resilient responses of the whole system of the region for climate change. So it has to be also a resilient response in the region. And let us focus then on these renewable energies that we want to develop. Well, you have them here on the slide. We want to make sure that um, hydroelectric grows. Right now, the levels of hydroelectric energy are mm, OK. We have, mm, we have quite a lot. And it's going to be difficult to grow too much because we have a lot. Then we have bioenergy and as was mentioned by the minister, here we don't have any wind in Lombardia. And this is a problem. We can't have windmills. We can't have that kind of energy. But it's also a problem of pollution. So anyway, we have to work on bioenergy because of that. Then heat pumps. Yes, indeed. We want to make sure that there's a strong increase of all heat pump technologies, essentially also because we can have a, a, quite a production. Uh, the, the potential is high. Then solar photovoltaic is essential for us. We want a strong increase increase that uh, and we have the sun indeed you can see it uh, in where i am we have a lot of sun so we want to make sure that that is a basis for development then the importance of energy communities this is a concept that we are working on we have to make sure that there are energy markets that also guide a good energy consumption. And this is where we, as a public administration, have a lot to do in order to attain our goal of uh, an emission reduction and this movement towards decarbonization. We have to increase the full participation of our citizens. And the pillar is energy, the introduction of renewable energies, and more specifically, photovoltaic energy. Right. Why? Well, because the social network and fabric of Lombardia is also its economic uh, motor, and it's the Italian motor, because we are highly industrialized. And so if we have the will to develop this uh, social involvement, it's going to have good consequences on the whole of the country. And uh, we are working as well with the Milano University. And we are told that if we keep this intermediate scenario between acceleration and moderation, it will mean that for the year 2030, we will have the development of 3,400 energy communities. We are very interested in this model because these 3,400 energy communities will produce a very high percentage of uh, up to 13 or 29 percent photovoltaic energy so then this photovoltaic energy will be used and will become part of the energy communities and this possibility will grow in throughout the territory 
and as well as well as reducing CO2, I mean, that is a well-defined goal, we will also have this move towards decarbonization. And we want to make sure that there are other goals to attain. So we don't only have uh, photovoltaic, which means a reduction of emissions. It's more than that. It's an, a totally a new model. We want to make sure that people save energy too. And, and this means that we have to educate and teach people to consume less energy. And so then once we go on to solar energy, that is very immediate and citizens can use solar energy the same day as it is produced. And because of this, we are very interested in citizens understanding what this is about. And as we do it, people will understand why we have to build the energy plants and the energy stations and the reception of this will be much more positive among the citizens. And obviously technologies uh, have to be renewed everywhere. Here you see on the left, these emissions that have to go down. They have been going down very gradually, but very slowly. And now we have the goal of reducing dramatically. So now is when we change gear, when we go on to um, intense work, because what we have in front of us is a difficult climb, but we have to make sure that we get to it. It's the only way. So it's not only direct emissions that we work on, but also indirect or what is termed shadow emissions. We have to be very much aware that is a kind of commitment. Yes, it's not only about what we produce, but uh, what we consume that's been produced elsewhere. So allocated funds, you have it here on the slide. So we have the recovery fund 2020. This has to do with the pandemic and the regional government decided uh, to assign practically 50 million euro for local authorities and this had to do with energy efficiency, vehicle replacement and vehicle charging stations. We're moving towards a more uh, electricity-based model, automotive model. Then we have uh, another fund for sustainable mobility. And then there's another fund that you see on the screen for the whole national territory. So the, the, the figure for regional funds is nearly 650 million only for Lombardia. It's regional recovery that's being uh, fueled with the public investment. And then we have the whole of Italy, as is the case of each one of you, I'm sure, have the green revolution. It's going to be working very well because we have this investment that will accelerate the process. So this was the first part of my speech as to the programming, I hope, to be good, but let me accelerate. Yes, you only have one minute, I'm afraid. Okay, okay. So then about photovoltaic systems, here you see an example. Here we have work that has been done already in this direction. We have, this is public building. These are um, buildings that uh, belong to very poor areas of the region. And what we're going to be doing is uh, we give support to these communities by building accumulation solar panels on these large buildings so that energy can be produced and consumed in situ. We have worked already on 45 buildings and we're talking all told about nearly 1700 individual homes and the production is of, uh, well, high levels of electricity. And this is done totally for the people in these homes to consume. So it's kind of self-production and self-consumption, but it's done in a collective way. So it's following the mandatory, the mandatory regulation package. And here you have the economic comparison. It means that uh, in 16 years, we have 30% uh, self-consumption and in a short time, we're going to be increasing this self-consumption up to 80%. That's all, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed, Gianluca. Thank you for this and final acceleration of your presentation. Thank you. Later on, yes, we'll ask about this uh, payback program. 
Anyway, we get the floor now to Irene from Ruby. She had uh, connection problems that are solved now. So let's see if we are lucky and she can talk about the Ruby project. Irene, you have the floor. Be as quick as possible. Yes, indeed, that'll be very fast. And my, apologi my apologies, the connection got cut. Anyway, as I was saying, the town of Ruby, 75,000 inhabitants and 11 industrial parks. Uh, so our carbon footprint, our ecological footprint is considerable. And the commitment of the city council was to go towards a more sustainable energy model that were a fair energy model. This started in 2011 when the Ruby Shines, Ruby Brilla project was created. It's not a project any longer, but rather it's become a department of the municipal government. And we, the, the goal is to reduce energy dependence and polluting emissions of all the areas and sectors of the city. Here you see it. I was showing you that our CO2 emissions come mainly from the industrial and transport sectors and much less from residential area and services. And as to the municipal and public lighting, well, that's only 2% of the emissions. With all this, what I mean is that it is very important that as a city council in Ruby, we are an administration close to our citizens. We have to empower citizens and companies. We have to train them, educate them. We have to accompany them as much as is possible and make it easy for them all to reduce their consumption and for them to start using renewable energy. Because if this is not the case, if we don't emphasize the private sector as well, we're not going to achieve this reduction of 55% of emissions for 2030, which is the first goal. So I'm focusing then on the public and private collaborations in Ruby. Many have taken place in a very successful way. In the next slide, you can see one of the examples. It's the uh, aggregated energy purchasing group. This is for small companies and industries. It's a project that uh, has its fourth edition. It started in 2018 and 65 companies are a part of it and all these through this uh, aggregated energy purchase in, in private auction have managed 20 gigawatts per hour, 100% renewable. And the invoice in the case of industry has been reduced 5%. And in the case of smaller trade between 15 and 20%, no less. In the next slide, you see self-consumption, zero, zero, zero emissions, zero investment. It's also destined to industry for aggregate purchasing of solar devices. And here it's uh, zero emissions and zero investment because it goes for self-consumption. What does it mean? All the industries that are part of the project have the possibility of uh, deciding to have the installation without any investment by means of a mm, sale and purchasing agreement that's based on a long-term participation. And it is done in such a way that there's a special dynamic among companies that eventually tends to become a network and it values the surplus energy produced. This project was started precisely last year and when the pandemic hit us. And even so, eight companies decided to continue forward and totally 1.2 gigawatts. And nowadays we in the second edition with 22 companies participating and we are expecting to solve the private purchasing and tender, which will uh, have the name for who has to start with all the development. Next slide. Here I'm telling you, how do we try and empower all citizens? Because this is the only way it has been said in which uh, energy models can change. We offer them three services. On the one hand, special workshops for understanding and uh, improving the energy invoice. This takes place both face-to-face uh, -face and online. Then here on this slide, we have this uh, tailor-made consumption report, both for residential areas and industrial areas. And here citizens 
can find out what the dimension is of the facilities that best fit on their rooftops, what the cost is, all the premiums coming from the municipal government, for example, a 50% reduction in property tax and different subsidies coming from the Energy Institute. And so they learn about amortization and we can foster this initiative. And the third service that we have just started this month is the, the service to search proximity companies for energy services. And basically the idea is that, uh, well, there is uh, to make supply and demand fitting together. And finally, and I think I've been very good about time, next slide, as to mobility. We also working on this and the City Council of Ruby is gradually electrifying all the municipal fleet of vehicles. And um, as regards citizens and companies, we have a whole network of charging points, all of them with renewable energy source. And we also make available to people um, special electric vehicle that is offered five hours free in order to get people to try this type of mobility. And this is all from me. Thank you very much. And my apologies again for the problem I had before. Great, Irene, thank you very much. Thank you. Indeed, yes, you've been very good about time. And I'm grateful because there was somewhat of a delay. If you like, now we can open a quick five minute Q&A session about the different projects that have been presented. And I would invite everyone to participate. So if you have any questions, go ahead. Questions for the speakers. What is it you would like to know more about? And what is it that impressed you the most? And what are the doubts you might have? Shall I begin? And I'll begin with Miss Catherine Azupardi. Or oh, Mr. Etienne, I'm not sure which of the two it was from Ron Alp. My 200 vehicles, these, these 200 vehicles that you anticipated, are they private or are they collective transport vehicles? How, how are you seeing this transformation of mobility? Yeah, all these vehicles are associated to different hydrogen stations deployed throughout the territory. So they're all kinds of vehicles. I mean, some are small private cars, some are uh, trucks. Uh, you can have buses, coaches, and but these are fleets that we define, uh, well, private fleets. Mm, they can be cars and trucks that belong to municipal governments, but uh, these are fleets that are close to one of these hydrogen stations. And so at the same time, we also have a possible integration with the whole region. I don't know whether you get the idea. Okay, interesting, yes. For Ulrich, Mr. Maurer. I said already that I was, uh, I loved this uh, mandatory dictate of having photovoltaic energy in new buildings. Could you tell us if people have been against it? Have people complained about this, uh, this legal measure? Because I think it's a measure that everybody in the European Union should follow. So I'd like to know uh, how, did people, did citizens complain? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think, well, this has been applied not only in Baden-Württemberg and other places in Germany too. It's very important for us in Germany, especially for the future, of course. And regarding this idea, of making it mandatory to have uh, photovoltaic energy installed in new buildings. It was very well received by the population. The reception was extremely positive. In fact, the new government that we have uh, that's now negotiating coalitions is going to continue making this mandatory because I think we all agree, all of us citizens and governments alike, 
because buildings are surfaces that can be used to have uh, photovoltaic energy installations and devices and everybody sees it as something positive because that way you don't have to use other parts of the territory for generating uh, renewable energy and so everybody agrees and that this is positive obviously the construction costs are higher they're rather substantial but everybody agrees in the same way that the house has uh, doors and windows in the future it will also have photovoltaic energy okay lovely i also defend this yes it's true if you have windows and doors you must have photovoltaic energy production too but what about industrial buildings, Mr. Mora, as well? Do we follow the same rationale? Um, as regards industrial buildings, this obligation will come in January 2022. So it's round the corner. Last year, this uh, principle was included already in the Act of Climate Protection, and it was stated that this would start happening in industrial buildings as of 2022, so they know that this is going to happen. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Extremely interesting. Now a question for Mr. Gianluca because uh, you talked about 3000 energy communities and the way i interpret this these are domestic uh, residential communities but what about industrial communities thank you thank you for your question well this um estimation has been carried out by the milano university about the italian territory and obviously it's been focusing on the regional territory of Lombardia. Truly, it's not only domestic or residential communities, but rather these are communities that can aggregate different subjects. And this means, well, citizens, companies, and also public entities. So these are communities structured in quite a large manner and there's quite a mix. Thank you. And Irene from Ruby, I have a question for you. Uh, what about these uh, public private partners, uh, partnerships? So, who is it that uh, signs for each agreement? Yes, sorry, my microphone was off. As a city council, we are. Mm, well, we go from door to door of all the industry and we explain the project, we tell them about the benefits and how everybody wins. And once the industries have uh, said that, yes, they want to participate and we have the aggregated demand, we write out the regulation for the private tender. And uh, one of the conditions for the private tender is that this has to be offered to the company to the companies that don't want to invest, they have to be uh, given the possibility of having a, a possible 10-year con contract to buy that kind of energy. And once those 10 years have gone over, then the industry is the owner of the installation. This is one of the requisites to be able to win the tender of the private tender. And when that is, that is done, we could say that the public administration just leaves everything in the hands of the private partner, okay? So, and it's in the hands of, of the one that's going to take charge in the private companies. And we have just been the conduit. We have, if there's any problem, of course, we're there to, to give our support and to clarify and help out. And we also help as regards the premiums of the subsidies because it's 50% coming for the industries from the Energy Institute in Catalonia. Okay, so does anyone have any questions or any remarks? I do have another from Mr. Maurer, our German partner, and that is this transborder project. I guess that it's easier to do I mean, obviously, I do understand there are many technological difficulties, but it's easier to do in your case, because the way I see it, on each side of the border, you already have a heat network working, okay? So then in a way, it simply kind of unite the two heat networks. Mm, I mean, this project would be very, very difficult if you would have to 
uh, develop a whole heat network from scratch, right? Did you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Yes, I heard it. Uh, yeah, I do agree. It is totally true. This is what happens. I mean, the principle for this was precisely that we had that. I mean, the German side where you have the steel works there, we don't have any residential areas that can take advantage of the waste heat generated. But then on the other side of the river in France, there's this network, yes, indeed, already built of houses that can take advantage of the, of the waste heat produced. That's why we thought it was a great idea to unite both because there was the pre-existing network. Yes, that way there could be a more efficient consumption. If we had had to build a network from scratch, we would have taken much longer, definitely. I mean, there's a need of heat uh, on the French side and there's a surplus of heat on the German side. And that's why we thought it was an ideal situation to work. That's why we did it this way. Very good, really. Extremely interesting. And I have just one, one question as well for Gianluca. As the Lombardia region doesn't have wind energy, and so you have to go towards photovoltaic energy for your energy transition, don't you see in Lombardia, although I do see, of course, that you have biogas, uh, renewable gas, but don't you see the possibility of renewable gas being a great help for you in your region? Yeah, but which of the renewable ones specifically? Pyrolysis, gas, or waste, ga biogas? Yeah, very possibly. Mm, I mean, the, the interest is there, absolutely. And there's a potential production, especially of biogas, uh, biomethane, to be more specific, biomethane. So yes, biogas uh, transformed. Yes, there's huge interest. And in Lombardia, mm, we do have this as a possible source for the production of renewable energy. It can be very powerful indeed, because in Lombardia, which is the center of the basin of the Po River. It's a very fertile valley. And that means, of course, that there is a lot of cattle. We have so many animals and we also work on animal feed. There's also cheese production, the Parmigiano Reggiano that's so famous. And then also our ham is very famous. So yes, there's this uh, wealth of uh, potential for biogas and we have all these trees. So indeed all this would mean, um, well, that we could use animal waste and forest waste. So organic waste, yes. And that would mean biogas. We have it now, but we want to develop it much more. It, it depends, I mean, the percentages have to increase. If we count the total of renewable energy, we already have biogas production. But the challenge that we have is to channel the production of biogas towards biomethane. That is, yes, something we want to work on. And it's a challenge for us because we have to talk about the technology, the facilities, aggregation, different scales. It's not possible to think about this conversion of going from a small facility of biogas isolated, but rather we have to reorganize the way in which we produce biogas and the way in which we make this biogas available. So that, that's that's what's more difficult, really. Yeah, I mean the 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 origins, we do have the waste and the possibility, the potential is there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we have a question coming from our participants. And the question is, hello, I'm an independent consultant, Tomas Solgate. I have a question for Mr. To whether to Ms. Moreira about public initiatives in Catalonia for green hydrogen, or what is the strategy of the Catalan sector on hydrogen? Lovely, yes. And I also have a question for Mr. Ulrich. Maurer, as to whether, can you hear me? Yes, yes, but rather low. Yeah, okay, now better? Yes, much, okay. 
Yes, a question on whether this obligation of installing photovoltaic uh, devices is incorporated in refurbishing projects when you want to refurbish old buildings. As to the question of Mr. Tomas Folgueira, well, in Catalonia, yes, there are initiatives being deployed that have to do with green hydrogen. We we have the Catalonia Green Hydrogen Project, and these are initiatives that have been started now. We are working on the consortium phase. And as regards the strategy of the Catalan administration, as I said in my presentation, we consider hydrogen, especially in a number of industrial sectors that are difficult to electrify, and might have quite a high demand. Well, these are precisely the places where we can first start with hydrogen and mobility. Mobility is where the Catalan strategy is focusing on most. We want to electrify and change our mobility model, definitely. And this has to happen wherever it might be necessary. So yes, we want to deploy hydrogen in mobility for heavy transport, especially throughout the territory and up to here. Yes, but you had a question for Mr. Mora. Yeah, for Mr. Ulrich Mora, yeah. So do ask again so he knows. No, yes, I, I got the question, that's fine, about photovoltaic, yes. But I can't remember exactly. It had to do on whether we make it compulsory for refurbishing residential homes. Well, yes, this is an aspect on which we are working. We want to see whether we can make it compulsory for private citizens as well. And very possibly, yes, uh, depends a bit on the size of the refurbishing, but we will also make it mandatory. Currently, we are working with different agents in order to see how we can uh, work on this regulation and see in what cases uh, the we can make it mandatory for them to have photovoltaic um, panels. It's something that right now is focusing on the refurbishing of the rooftops only, only when they, refer, they reform the rooftops. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. If there are no further questions, we will go on now to the very honorable minister who will close this event. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Joanne. On behalf of the minister, the minister of uh, foreign action and open government, it is a pleasure for me to give the closing speech for today's session. First and foremost, I have to say thank you. Thank you on behalf of the Spanish Presidency of the Four Motors for Europe. Thanks to all our colleagues of the Catalan Institute of Energy for this initiative. Thank you for the organization of this event. And thank you to the Climate Action and Rural Action Department for their great support. Special, special thanks to all the institutional representatives and to all the experts of Ronald, baden württemberg Lombardia, and um, the implication in this. And of course, thank you to all the persons participating and listening. It's been a very interesting uh, event. And as we all know, this is part of this European Week on Sustainable Energy. So. In this case, I would like to say congratulations and thank you to the organizers for the effort they have made to incorporate this session within the framework of this European Week for Sustainable Energy. We all know, and we have seen it confirmed today, we know what the basic goals are, the four motors for Europe. We like to share knowledge. We like to create spaces to learn from each other. And we like to develop and build uh, fruitful alliances. Because of this, during these 30 years existence, uh, the Four Motors for Europe has continued to be committed to this very close and ongoing collaboration. And one of the most visible results of this collaboration is precisely 
the group of the environmental group. This uh, they've been really, really um, involved in today's initiative, and in fact, with this activity, they have complied uh, at all times, and they continue to um, fill with interesting content the collaboration of our four regions. This time and seeing how many subject areas we've covered, I see that there is a huge involvement of the economy work group. And this is collaboration that has been seen clearly, it has to continue in the future. And this uh, all encompassing collaboration is clearly linked to the line, the central axis of the Catalan president the, the Catalan presidency for this program, it's developing the 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. The Catalan presidency, presidency program wants to continue with this transformation of our, of our societies following the 2030 agenda on the European uh, Green Mission. We want a more sustainable world for all of us and we want to overcome the pandemic as well in the best possible way and also social and economic consequences. So in this uh, context of the Catalan presidency and on the basis of this uh, focus of the sustainable development goals that today we had this event, this session with this main goal of comparing the roadmaps of our four regions in this path towards energy transition. And I'm so happy, so happy to have seen the high quality of all the contributions. It's been an enriching session and so interesting. I was saying that the fact of it being so many subject areas to cover makes us think that this synergy of ours is working and it makes it possible to think of specific actions for the companies and industries. And this is going to be organized thanks as well to the energy for the competitiveness of companies organized by the Catalan government and there's the involvement of the economic group of the four motors. I'm referring specifically to the specific event that will be carried out between the 16th and 18th of November uh, within the framework of the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona. So just let me say that today's event is one of the last initiatives that will take place in the framework of the Catalan presidency of the Four Motors of Europe. I'm fully convinced that with the joint effort of all the territories of the network of the Four Motors for Europe, this will have a continuity and will give fruit as well for the next uh, presidencies of the network, starting, as we know, with Auvergne, Rhône Alpes, as of December. So, well, I encourage you all to keep contact, keep collaborating under the umbrella of this network of ours. And finally, once again, my thanks to the organizers, to the speakers especially, and also to all the institutional representatives for their commitment towards the four motors of Europe. And so I officially close this uh, event with great satisfaction. I think indeed that we have new knowledge and that we all share, and this will have, I'm sure, a good result on our citizens. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Joan, and thank you to all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, Munza Vilalta. And now I have to close today's event. We have been very good about time, which is great. I'm happy about that. It's been for me an honor to moderate this discussion. And I remain with many of the messages conveyed. So to go back to reindustrialization in Europe, to have an industrial revolution for Europe and to change the mindset radically. This is the way to go. And the four motors have it very clear. We have to make sure that we push towards this transition and make it possible. Thank you and have a good day.